Welcome to Analyzing Finance with Nick. In this video, I'm going to be giving more of a thought experiment. A lot of people want to maximize the efficiency and lower the costs of a lot of things in the economy. Healthcare is an example. Education is an example. Uh, real estate and rents are an example. A lot of things um, due to regulations, compliance requirements, or just um, various government interventions are higher in cost than people think would be in a purely uninterrupted free market. And this is generally true. And regulation has probably, and the, and the cost of complying with it, has increased the costs of many products and services uh, across the economy. And really the question though is, are these inefficiencies a feature or a bug? Uh, that is the question I'm going to address because look, every inefficiency that makes, for example, a trip to the hospital more expensive is not just simply the bottom line profits going to insurance companies health insurance companies or to hospitals or anybody. In fact, for the example of health insurance companies, they have a capped gross margin based on Obamacare registration. It's about 15%. So the only way they can grow is if they're growing their top line because 15% of a billion is more than 15% of 800 million. And so their costs go up proportionately. And all of these costs are people's jobs, essentially. Like, but where are the, the middle class jobs in America? Particularly in the more rust belt parts of the country in the Midwest. Um, they are in education, mainly like through working as either administrators or teachers at universities. Or in the healthcare system, whether it's nurses or hospital admin staff doctors, any sort of healthcare or healthcare adjacent professionals. And a lot of them are administrative bureaucrats due to just all the paperwork involved processing both government and Medicare, as well as um, insurance companies. And so, and there's the universities that you've seen like tuition has skyrocketed. The rate of pay for professors has gone up a minuscule fraction of that. And most of that extra revenue has been going, some of it's going to CapEx and construction of new buildings, things like that, but most of it has been going to the bloating of administrative staff and their salaries. So a lot of the middle class and upper middle class jobs in modern America, say post-1980, uh, are essentially grift, for lack of a better term. I don't mean that they're defrauding people deliberately, but... They are a product of either state-mandated or societally encouraged um, fat in the system that has room to be cut. Uh, David Graeber, in his book, uh, BS Jobs, goes into the phenomenon that a lot of middle to upper middle class jobs are basically designed to create social roles for people who otherwise would have nothing to do or would not generate enough value to maintain the standard of living that is implied given their level of education and their social class. There's a lot of man random middle management and corporate uh, corporations that this applies to. Uh, the whole DEI complex could be an example of this. Um, a lot of the administrative and bureaucrats, as I mentioned in healthcare and education sectors, can be an example of this. The increased growth of of government bureaucrats, both on the federal and the state level over the last few years, and how the fact that Washington, D.C. has the highest average salaries of any metropolitan area in the United States is also a sign that the fact that main, the main source of the quote-unquote modern middle class is really just inefficiencies. Like If we had a more truly efficient free market economy and we cut a lot of either unnecessary government jobs or regulation or socially mandated uh, corporate private sector jobs related to those, you would have a mass unemployment of people in the middle and upper middle class 
and they don't will not have a way to replace that in the productive economy. The question of whether this is a feature or a bug is not is it just an accident that this was these jobs were all created. What would be the social risk if we did have it? Um, so I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. Yeah, it'd probably be better for society if people's health care and college tuition and housing and tax burdens were a lot lower due to the less need to pay salaries of these people. However, if you had these same people all unemployed, what would the social implications or underemployed, let's say they're all working at Starbucks or something like that, what would be the consequences of that? If you want to look at an example, and I talked about this in my video on the economic future of this country, is Egypt. Uh, Egypt has had consistently a problem of a relatively high educated population, but also a really big overeducated yet underemployed population. So these are people who expect a certain social status for the fact that they complete their university, but when they graduate, there's not really any jobs to fill that demand for skilled, the supply of skilled labor that Egypt has. This is a problem a lot of emerging market countries. They push people, get a lot of college degrees, but the economy has developed enough to have enough jobs that require that level of education and skills. And so these people have to take jobs that pay lower than they would expect or are not as prestigious in terms of status and they get bitter resentment. And that's why whenever you have like a little bit of a food scare with the wheat imports in a place like Egypt, it goes into unrest and why they can't have a democracy because it takes martial law to hold down the anger, the revolutionary impulse of a large young population of overeducated yet underemployed people. Uh, another example would be Russia pre the Russian Revolution. Like pretty much the entire Bolshevik movement was a bunch of call, recent grads and or dropouts who were overeducated yet underemployed and used that resentment to create the intellectual framework and to rabble rouse to basically succeed in turn, for turning the creating the Soviet Union. If and I think societies learn from the example of Soviet Union and also the rise of radical governments as a result of the Great Depression and a lot of the unemployment, particularly the middle classes that happened during then. They're like, we can't let this happen again. Even if we have people who really don't have much of a role other than a salary to help consumption keep going. That's better than them being on the street or underemployed and wanting to pass more draconian redistributionist policies than we have now if we just gave them a shut up and be happy type of job. This could be the solution. It's like when my great grand my grandfather lived during the Great Depression, he told me basically the reason why a lot of otherwise economically conservative people voted for FDR back then because they're like, look. If we didn't find some way to employ these people, they would have rioted and brought communism to the United States. And I think that sentiment was really a big driver to the increased intentional complexity of the bureaucracy of America, both on the government level and the corporate level, since FDR's presidency. And there have been some eras of cutbacks that companies have become more lean in some ways. When that happens, those cutting cycles in the private sector are usually correlated with increases in the government sector. And we've seen this in the current economy. Like, if you look at a lot of job numbers, I mean, you've seen like post 2021 a disproportionate amount of job growth in either government or healthcare. And if you look at GDP growth, it almost lines up with the growth in the budget deficit over the same period of time. Uh, the Wall Street Journal calls this the welfare industrial complex. And I'm not saying that's the sole driver of the economy, but I think it's this, this what's kept the economy out of recession to a certain degree over the last year. It's more deliberate in places like Europe, where in France, for example, they make it almost impossible to fire people. So a lot of corporate jobs are effectively of the same security as government jobs. And a lot of these, they have a lot of national champion companies, which are state owned, but compete globally, such as Air France, who were made particularly as a source of easily accessible employment to the masses. And that goes to the crux of this video is that 
what we perceive as inefficient, every inefficiency in a modern mixed economy is somebody's job and livelihood. So if you look at it from a pure Pareto efficiency outlook, this economy has a lot of fat and a lot of bloat to cut. If you look at it from a social balance perspective, then that might be very different because if you laid off all these people and they have no place that they can make similar money, what does that do for social stability? Especially now, the political environment is hyperpolarized as it is now. And I'm not saying I'm for just hiring people to do BS jobs just to keep them from rebelling. But it's just an idea that's been on my mind. And I want to see, see what your thoughts of my viewers on this. And like, is this really the reason partially for the intentional expansion of complexity, both in the business corporate world and in terms of government regulation? The other counter that I know I'm going to get, and so I'm going to address it before I release this video, is, well, universal basic income. Wouldn't that be a more efficient way of doing this? Why don't we just pay these people the salary without giving them the job and the potential damage they have in terms of regulatory power over other people or being a speed bump in the way of actual economic and technological progress? Yeah, that could be an argument for universal basic income. But if you set the precedent of paying people to do nothing and that they're entitled just to a certain standard of living for simply existing in, even if their work is not productive, it, at least they inherently have to do something, which gives one a sense of personal worth that you are a cog in the machine, even if you're a cog that can be taken out and the machine will run just fine. And or two, you see that there's a large chunk of the population that is basically just ransoming the rest of us by saying we're going to rebel if you don't pay us to do nothing. That's going to incentivize a lot of other people to effectively use that same political ransom. And that creates a whole new set of problems and a can of worms that I can't really get into in this video. So I don't think universal basic income really is the solution to this problem either. In fact, it'd probably make it worse because it would discourage people from who would who are working in the more essential and productive parts of the economy as be part of the society's collective ransom against each other. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share if you like more of this content. Or if you want me to switch to back to like the economic futures type videos or financial concept lectures instead of these more bigger picture things, leave a comment, like, or subscribe, or share. I want to know what you guys think about these types of videos.